Hey guys, and welcome back. This is Chosen Arctic, and today we are going to be getting ourselves a Druid Craft house made. So, I hope you guys are ready. So, it took me a little while to find this biome here, but starting right off, here we are. So, this biome is your standard biome that actually grows mushrooms in it. And that's what I needed. I needed a, a new area. As you can see, I've gone quite a, a ways. Um, through a lot of snowy mountains that were actually quite beautiful. These mountains are actually really... Like, this was incredible, by the way. The terrain gen there. Um, but I did want to, to talk about this. So, this right here is kind of cool, because as soon as you get a new, like, chunk generation, or at least for me, if you start the pack out now, all your mushrooms are going to be like this. But these are normal mushrooms, but the stems are turned into enhanced mushroom uh, yeah, so like enhanced mushrooms. And when you break the stems, you actually get the actual mushroom stem. And that turns into like almost like a wood. So these are now not useless, right? They actually have a use and you can farm the wood. And I think if you can grow, I think you can grow regular mushrooms into their larger variant. And by doing that, of course, you're going to get these like new stems here. So that's pretty cool. I want to see what a, the red mushroom looks like because I think these are also really nice. These are really good building materials. And you can see you actually get them because normally you wouldn't unless you had silk touch. So this turns into a, a much better... Oh, there's a creeper. I know it's dark here, but this turns into a much better version, I think, of birch. And of course, it has all the variants of, of this stuff to go with it. So let's just take, for example... Enhanced mushrooms. This also, however, supports the mushrooms from a glowing mushroom biome from Quark. Uh, we have yet to find one, but I would love to find one because those biomes are amazing. Um, but they're underground. They're, you're going to find them under, they're going to be underground caves, and you're more than likely not going to stumble upon one like right from the beginning. Like you're not going to be able to notice it from above ground. So really, you just kind of have to stumble upon one. And get really lucky. So this is actually another new thing that uh, was added into this in this current update that we're on. Um, it's called Swamp Expansion. And you can see that it adds this really bushy grass. I wonder what other things it adds. I don't, I don't quite know. But I did see that it was in here. So it adds all kinds of different like uses for stuff, right? Cattails. I'm assuming those are going to be like in a swamp biome. Buckets of sabfish. So I guess it adds potentially a new type of mob, whether that's a passive or whatever. So yeah, there's a different vines and stuff. That's kind of cool. So more aesthetically pleasing things. And I, I always love me a good uh, aesthetic mod for Minecraft. Making the overworld more immersive, that's what I want. I wish my, you know, I, as of right now, I feel, really feel that like they've made, they've really done a good job and made the nether fantastic in the latest update 116. But in... In the, now the overworld just kind of feels a bit more empty, right? It just feels empty. There's no like cool particle effects that happen in the biomes. It just feels just plain now for, for some reason. Um, I don't know. Maybe you guys can let me know down in the comments what you guys think about that. Does, does like the overworld feel plain in regular Minecraft? Um, I have played a lot of just regular Minecraft and... I can tell you, in my, in my opinion, it, it does. But I would love to hear what you guys have to say about it. Ah, uh, this right here is definitely from that swamp expansion. This is what I wanted to get a hold of. Look how cool these look. These are, go so great inside of our uh, like little pond area. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely coming up with ideas already. Hmm. I want to put, put these mods to use. Totally do. So this is another thing I kind of wanted to get into. You can see the bees are, are right here. Um... I think if we make a a fire, a campfire, and we place this two blocks below this, so right here, this should be enough to smoke these guys out. And whenever they go back in their hive, which they should hopefully do, here in a minute, like once they do their thing, they should go back in the hive. We should be able to collect it with a silk touch pick, which we have. 
And I would kind of like to have a, a couple of bees, like, you know, lingering around our base. All right, so they both just went inside. I can now pick that up. Perfect. Should be able to break this too. Ooh, the silk touch actually works on it. That's nice. So I'm, I'm actually kind of just planting some of these cattails around. They look amazing. Um, but I wanted to see here at the swamp expansion, um, this giant tall grass that I supposedly had picked up. I don't know where it's at now. And I really wanted to plant some tall grass. Oh, well, bone, bone mill to the rescue for this. Um, because I really want to get some bone mill like around here just to add some more grass into this because yeah, we are kind of missing a little bit of grass, especially around the, uh, the edges here. Um, and then I also wanted to take a look. I know I grabbed as well some vines. These right here, these passion vines, these things are really, really cool looking and we could probably swap them out for some of the other vines that are growing nearby. They, they grow flowers on them. Like, how how nice looking is that? Like, that's that's nice, right? Um, so, let's see if maybe I can break like this and add, add them right here. That should work. Also, maybe to kind of separate the colors right here, we can swap these. Wow, they are much brighter, that's for sure. They kind of stick out like a sore thumb, so we better like cover more areas with them, right? That's just, if something's sticking out like a sore thumb, you, you just need to cover it, cover more of it, right? Yeah. So it's, it's not sticking out anymore. <laughs> so at this point, I kind of want to head over here into this ocean because there's a special type of bone mill that I would really love to make. And I'm going to go ahead and use my shear, right? Oh no, we can't use a shear. We have to use a silk touch tool. I was thinking maybe you could use shears, but I'd forgotten. Um, and I need to grab all of this. Well, I guess while we're here, we might as well grab some other things too. Like this stuff, which comes from the aquatic mod. Like there's all kinds of stuff here to take, but I really need the, uh, the coral, which you can get via silk touch, I believe. Cause I don't think, yeah, punching it just breaks it. So you don't want to do that. You definitely want to grab up all of this. And this is going to be very helpful. By the way, if you want to know like how difficult this stuff is, it's not that bad, but there are some other like blocks from Upgrade Aquatic that are pretty expensive. <laughs> One requiring Nautilus shells. So yeah, good luck with your Nautilus shell farm or I mean, I guess you could you can fish, but if you're playing 116 version of Minecraft, well, good luck with that because the AFK fishing farms are kind of not a big thing anymore. Now, if you're coming from modded 112 and you think, oh, these blocks look really, these blocks are fantastic. Like they're super brightly colored. Like I want to collect a lot of them. I want to make a build out of it. Well, let me, let me burst your bubble here because that's not really the case because as, as bright as this block is and we silk touched it in the water, as soon as we place it outside of water, well, it's going to eventually change. Like, yeah. And, and, and dry out and die. So yeah, your coral may look nice in your inventory, but it doesn't stay bright. Now I think these do. I think these will stay. I don't rem no, no, these die as well. So yeah, these things will die on you. So yeah, unless you place them in water, like if you place them in water, yeah, they'll stay, right? That will stay, that will stay. But as soon as it's placed outside of water, it's it's going to die on you. So, yeah, but not not the not these. These are nice sea pickles. They're your friend. I'm pretty sure these uh, these work outside. They're not lit like they, they only they're only be lit up, I think, whenever they're in the water. But yeah, outside of water, they're pretty nice. So I just had this idea. Could I use a bottle to capture these things? Because I did see that the like I looked up lunar moth and I did notice that like they have them in jars like what does it take to get them and I was like maybe I can use a bottle like maybe that's how it works and well it's exactly how it works and apparently like you can release it but I think if you shift right click the ground it places it in there and look at that it's like a jar full of little moths Look, how, how cool is that? That's pretty nice. I, I like that idea. Huh. 
I'm also going to grab these like little biomes of plenty mushrooms. They're so cute. Look at that. We could place those in our, uh, our area. So I have this awesome plan to make this very druid-esque style house that is going to actually house hopping bonsais full of every sapling that we have. And we can, of course, add to it from that point. Um, so that way we have like a, a wonderful supply of all different types of building blocks, right? So to do that, um, I'm thinking about getting these trees to grow. Now, I don't know if all these trees will grow. These are a palette of trees that just from the sapling look really good and I think would kind of work together to make this like grouping of trees. And then from that grouping of trees, I will be able to build something in them. Um, and that's kind of the goal. Like I want to build like this druid-esque, like very grown over type style build to put these saplings on. I think that would be super fitting, right? Um, so... This dead sapling is definitely going to be a very good part of it, a very big part of this. Um, also, the frosty, I'm just worried about the frosty sapling um, with the leaves because I do know that the other leaves seem to have dis despawned. I don't know if that's been fixed with cork, um, but that was something that I was definitely worried about. But we're here for a specific reason. Let me go ahead and close this, remove all of these because we've basically done all that. But this tree fertilizer is what I have been here trying to get started this whole time, right? So let's grab our coral. We have tons of it now. And then I'm going to throw the coral in here. And we can use wither roses. I have a lot of them. So might as well like use some wither roses for this. There we go. And will this work? I don't know. Maybe it requires a vanilla type. Will this... Wait, why is the recipe not working? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Interesting. If I click this... Tube coral... I... Hmm. Did we not collect any coral that was, uh... Minecraft... That was related to this type of coral? No, I don't think so. Please tell me that upgrade, the Upgrade Aquatic mod does not remove every type of coral that is vanilla based. Please tell me that, because now I got to go back out and find some actual coral. <laughs> All right, let's see. Coral. Maybe I just hadn't got to it in this list. I'm going to throw... Oh, there was actually some tube coral. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, it does... Yeah, th there's some vanilla in here, right here. This is a vanilla coral. That's probably what I'm needing. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Is that all of it? No, I, I grabbed a couple other things. So what this should do is this should let me... It says right here, a powerful combination of materials suitable for speeding up the growth of common trees. It says grown trees regardless of their spacing condition. That's important because spacing condition means a lot, right? So I'm going to take this back. I need to go back into my saplings and kind of pull out what I was, uh, I was hoping to get here, right? Um, and I just wanted to mix a few of these together. Now this dead sapling, I don't have more of it. So, you know what? I might take that and leave that in there. We might, we might work, work with that some other day. Um, I was also thinking of using some dark oak as well. And four of those will be a nice base for what we're going with. And then also some of this rosewood, which I think looked really, really good. Um, the magic sapling, we might also try like one of those as well. So I'm also going to need some dirt because that is, of course, going to be needed just uh, to place our saplings, right? And here's the idea. Here's the plan and here's the location. I want to have a area that branches off into this little spot right here. And this is going to be like the perfect spot for this. So I just need to clear out just ever so slightly this location. Yeah, I know, like ever so slightly here, I'm chopping down these huge trees. Um, but this is definitely where we uh, we want to do this at. So let's actually go ahead and test out this fertilizer and let's see if this stuff works. Um, so I think what our base should be is probably a dark oak tree. And hopefully we get, I mean, if we got one like that, that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? Um, but a dark oak tree and then is it just going to take one of these? Ooh, it really did. Okay, so that was just one, right? And it's not the greatest looking dark oak tree in the world, but I think we can kind of 
branch off from there. <laughs> that's, that's an awful pun. Um, so let's try these. Let's see. Ooh. So there's this, this tree growing into here. Will this tree do something? Like, will these trees... Let me break that, just in case this one is awfully big. So that's kind of cool. That one's not growing. This is a willow. Okay, so I'm going to assume that this one's not going to grow. Okay. Now what about this one? Oh yeah, that definitely grew into this. So we're, we're creating this like bunch bunching of trees. And this is what I want. I kind of want a big base down at the bottom. Okay. So I think one more of these and we'll be good. One in the front. Okay, so we got this like mixture here. I want to drop down into this. Like right about here. No, actually right here where this leaf is at. Yeah. And I want to get a new tree started. So it said regardless of spawning conditions. So I place another rose here. Okay, it spawned up. And then same should go for this one. Right about here. Wow, I love this. I love that it does that. Yeah, this is turning into a nasty mess, though. With the trees. Hmm. I might just tear this whole thing down and try again. And see what I could potentially come up with. Hmm. Okay, so let's just try again just using rosewood. Like, I think that... I like the way that this wood looks. Much better. And you know what? Okay, so I, I want to make this a large tree. So I might actually just do this, and this will be big enough, I think. I am going to need more of this material, and I don't know. Let's check this. Bone mill? Don't think bone mill is going to really help it. Oh, it does. Okay, so this doesn't even matter anyways. This stuff will grow regardless. Doesn't really have much of a condition, it looks like. Yeah, and this tree definitely feels more druidy. Hmm. Okay, so where do I want this? Um, where do I want this at? This, like, little ha hut that I plan on building in here? I think, like, right here. It's going to be, like, this triangle-shaped, like, hide ha hidey hole type thing that's going to go in here. And I do want the floor, this to probably be the leaf base right here. Oh yeah, plans are going through my mind <laughs> right as we work on this. Now, since we are messing around with Druidcraft, this is actually a really nice thing. This woodcutter, um, well, it works with vanilla stuff, but it gives you all kinds of stuff. So let's go to oak, for example. It doesn't seem to be working with this one, but it does work with this. So like any like of, of these things, like you can make with just regular oak planks. It, that makes it so much easier to craft some of these things. Uh, but for me, for right now, looks like I'm crafting at least this stuff from Atmospheric. I'm crafting it by hand. So I kind of have the house structure built. I went ahead and used the roofs. I actually kind of thought that it fit very well with this. And so we have this like A-frame style like house up in this tree. Now the tree, of course, needs a lot of work. So all I got to do now is come in here and customize this tree a little bit uh, by giving it some, like, logs that kind of branch out a little bit. Sort of like this. Of course, they need to have that, like, coming down sort of style to them. So I probably need to work my way downward to do this. And then, of course, break out pieces here. But I think overall, this is uh, this is turning out way better than I actually expected it to, which is <laughs> really, really cool. So I sort of have the whole structure like kind of complete with the leaves and everything to make it fit in. But I really want to add a rope in here. And I think I can make this tall enough 
So look realistic. Look like it's actually hooked to something. Um, and then maybe drop it down. And this is actually, surprisingly enough, from Druidcraft, which of course I want to try and incorporate as much Druidcraft stuff as possible into here. So yeah, you kind of, you ride this up like a ladder. There we go. And I need some sort of thing to kind of attach this to. Break off the top bit. I might be able to use some kind of fence, right? Let's see. Fence. Um, we don't really have any oak. You know what? I'm just going to use some slabs here. And I might just continue this over to that. There we go. That's not bad. That kind of, you know, that kind of fits. Fits in a little bit. Um, this is the only thing that could probably use a change. There we go. And I'll also change this. Now, um, this is where these doors really, really shine. Like, I was able to take basically the slab and it actually gives a recess on the front and the back. Which really fits. These are just the slabs just facing the other way. And it really hides everything. Like, you have this little bitty peaking area, but other than that, you really can't tell. Now, what I want to do in here is I want to fill this with drawers. Um, but I got to be careful on uh, how many I can actually fit in here. Let's see. Because this does need a cl technically a clear spot. So, okay. So, we can technically place them right here. That would give us a clear spot. Because it needs to be... It needs to have at least three blocks available for the build that I'm doing. So I can go ahead and place these in here. All I'm going to do is just do a drawer setup, same as all the other ones I've done. Drawers are going to line just like this. And technically I could put them here. I think this might be enough for now. Um, I need to kind of pick and choose what exactly I do want as far as saplings growing in here. But I think this is going to work out fantastically. Look at this. It's a nice hut specifically for this. Hmm. I think this is going to be wonderful. So we have these two things, which are just blossoms. This would really just be for leaves of these really bright colors. Um, then I also have this uh, elder sapling, which has a really nice wood type. But yeah, some of them I won't be able to plant. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind. Cherry has a really nice sapling color. I'm already using this one. Acacia, I haven't done yet. We've done this one. We already have that. Here's a frosty. Um, this is a apple oak sapling. I think that might give us apples, to be honest. Um, this is just a flowering oak, sa oak sapling. Not really interested in that either. The maple would be for its leaves. Can we do the nether? Yes, we can. And the dead. And I think that's just about it for right now. Oh, no, we need a rose. So there we go. That's actually all the saplings that I absolutely wanted to have growing in here and they're all doing it and they, they look really good and so they all should generate what is this silent gear a nether banana that's interesting huh coming from that uh that nether huh i hope that nether banana is useful that might be a good food so druidcraft also has this like really cool ceramic lantern that fits right in with this theme I also went ahead and placed these because these Lunar Moth Lanterns are from Druidcraft. It's so crazy how when you get inspiration, how you can just make things look so much better once you do this. And also, I think these walls are pretty flat, so I'm going to add upside down stairs to them. And it gives them a little bit more detail to it. Like, same goes for this. Like, I think I might be able to squeeze in here. I'll just place them like that. Yeah, I think they look better sticking out versus how they were. There we go. So this gives us a nice little window seal. Same over here. Um, now the front, we, we could do this same deal to the front. Um, but let's take a look at potential like furniture. I think, uh, oh, I, I also got these crates that we can probably place in here. Um, so like if we remove some fencing, might be able to say, hey, let's put these crates in here. Like 
this. Looks like they kind of connect, don't they? There we go. We can make them not connect, though. All right. So not bad. Not bad for a very quick creation. Um, and this is how it kind of stands out. Now, of course, the colors are kind of fitting-ish. I, I, I really think that maybe spruce could be something else. And that could probably fit in more. Also, leaves could probably fit in here a bit better. Um, and we could probably slab up the bottom just a little bit to kind of tidy it up. But as far as this goes, I think this is a pretty decent build for like a custom tree that we put together and uh, getting ourselves a place to store these without it just being, you know, just normal. So as always, I want to give a huge shout out to one of my Patreons. And of course, they get a nice plaque on this build. And uh, that actually goes to literally just, um, I mean, that's their Patreon name. So it's, it's, it's just, uh, just Mike. Yeah, just, uh, just Mike. Well, thank you, Mike. And I do appreciate it, and uh, it fits very well in this build. And um, I just want to say a thank you for uh, for being a Patreon and being a newer Patreon as well. Um, all of you guys who are Patreons definitely drive this content, like I always say. And uh, I just want to say a huge thanks. And uh, guys, wow, we have gone a long way in this world. And I'm really just trying to get this world as nice looking, so that way when you guys come into this world... You guys can have like free range to really just build whatever you want if you want to. Consider it almost like a uh, a modded world that I survived through, and now I'm thriving, and I want to share that with you guys. So that's kind of what I'm working on. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, of course, be sure to give this a huge thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And guys, I will see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.